Hey folks, in today's video I want to talk about render fragments in Blazor. In the last video in this series I set up what is going to be the very basic skeleton of a self-hosted blog. At the end of that video I said I was going to do some behind the scenes work of moving things into components. And as I started doing it I realized I should probably talk about it because I was doing a lot of render fragments. Here's the first blog post I was using as an example to set up our skeleton. There's a lot of things in here that we're doing multiple times but one of them is the headings. So here's an h1 tag, here's an h2 tag, and for the most part, the classes are the same. They're just a little bit different sizes. And so I was gonna move that into its own component. And what I wanna do for these headings is I wanna create a new component that can accept the type of heading it's going to be, whether it's gonna be H1, H2, or H3. And then you can pass in the render fragment that you want it to build. So to do that, I'm going to go into my shared folder and I'm going to create a new Blazor component. I'm just going to call this heading. And in this component, we are going to accept what type it's going to be. And for that, I'm going to use an enum. So I'll say public enum heading type, and you can see GitHub Copilot fills it in for me. I'm not gonna do all the headings. I'm just gonna do one through three. And then I want to accept a parameter for that type. So I'll say new parameter, and it's going to be a public heading type. I'll just call it type, and I'll give it a default value of an H1. And one option that we have for this is we could just create another parameter that's the text of what we want to show, which would probably work for most cases, but let's say, for example, we want to pass in some HTML and show an emoji or something in our headings as well. It's a little bit harder to do with text and it opens up more options for making mistakes. So another option is a render fragment. So first I'll create the parameter and then I'll show you how it works. So new parameter and it's going to be a public render fragment and I'm going to call it child content. I'm calling it child content for a very specific reason. Blazor by default will use that name for render fragments. And I'll get into why that's important when we start adding multiple render fragments in a little bit. And now in our HTML, we want to render the different h1, h2, h3 tags based off of that type. So I'm gonna create a switch statement and GitHub Copilot again is gonna fill this all in for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab and accept this. So we're going to switch on the type. And if we look at the case statement for the h1, it's creating an h1 tag and then it's using this child content parameter that we passed in. And let's go back into our blog post where we can actually pass in this heading value and this render fragment and I'll show you how you use that. So here's our current h1 tag and instead we want to use our new heading. So I'm gonna say heading and I'll pass in the type of h1. Render fragments are anything inside of your brackets. So in this case, I can just put in text of the title of what our heading is going to be. Before I get into more examples, let's just go and make sure this works. I'm going to steal this class here and I'm gonna go in my heading and add that in my H1. I'll go ahead and do it in the H2 and H3. I'll just change these to be a little bit smaller size. And then I'll save that and I will make this a little bit smaller. And you can see the page is refreshed and now it's the exact same run SQL Server on M1 or M2 MacBook title that we had before. In our example, we're only using text, but it doesn't have to be. This is the cool part about render fragments. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all that, go to a new line, and render fragments could be HTML. So it could be something here, something there. And if I save that, it's going to render the exact HTML that we gave it. So this content right here is child content. For our example of a heading, this is really all that we need, but I'm going to show you how you can use multiple render fragments if you need to. Back in our heading file, I'm going to copy the child content and I'm going to create another one called test content. And then up here in the HTML, I'll just make a new div and I'll just say test content is at test content. And if that's all I do and I don't change anything, if I go back into my page, it'll reload and everything still works the way that it's supposed to. However, if I remove all of that and I say test content, you can see now I have a render fragment that has a name. And when you have multiple render fragments, you can use the name of that render fragment to add things into it. So if I just say hello there and I save it, I don't know why Blazor does this. When you add new render fragments to components, you have to restart the application. The .NET watch doesn't work. Um, if you are watching this and you know why, let me know. So I'll go ahead and just rerun the application. And then I'll go back into the one I was using and I'll refresh that. And now you can see it says test content and then hello there. But what happens if we do what we did before and we just have another div in here that says something here. If I refresh it, nothing happens. And the reason is because we have multiple render fragments. If you want to use all of the render fragments, you have to use them by name. So instead of just saying that, I could say child content and then a div inside of that that says 
hello there. And if I refresh it, you can see now it's part of that H1 tag. One thing that is kind of confusing about this is if I take test content out and I put my div back in there of hello again, and I refresh the page, you can see it has hello again here and then test content, there's no value for test content because I didn't pass in that render fragment. But I also didn't call it by name. And that's because Blazor has some magic behind the scenes where if you're only using essentially one render fragment, it's going to assume that the name of that is child content. And in our case, we did call it child content. So it's going to put it in that render fragment. And that's pretty much it as far as render fragments go. Uh, like I said, those can be as big or as small as you want them to be. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.